Listen to me. Greetings, Taekwondo family. Welcome to Miami Minutes, the show that's here to even up the score one minute and kick at a time. Cast your mind back. It is 1987, the year of the stock market crash, Reagan's speech at the Berlin Wall, and most importantly, the first Final Fantasy game. Whitney Houston wanted to dance with somebody. Rick Astley wasn't going to give you up. And George Michael gave us a little faith. Arnold fought for his life in the jungle. A robotic man policed the mean streets, and old Captain Jim transported a whale through time. Something else happened, of course. The reason we are all here. The single most important moment in world history. The cinematic masterpiece Miami Connection was made. It wasn't unleashed upon the world until the 18th of August, 1988. And the film... it bombed. Nobody went to see it, really. We'll get to that. I am one of your hosts, John Parker. <laughs> and I am here to steal all your cocaine along with your life. <laughs> God damn uh, it. Through podcasting episodes somehow. <laughs> it's me, Niall McGowan. Oh, uh, I can't get rid of you. Yeah. Uh, I thought that I was really I was almost shocked and offended there, John, when you went through all those important things that happened in nineteen eighty seven. Didn't mention year of my birth as well. Oh well, yeah. I always forget you're a year younger than me. Oh. <laughs> so, like, if anyone's, you know, my birthday's coming up. Oh, actually, I don't know when this will air. It might have, it might be soon. It might have gone. I mean, we'll, we'll find out. But Well, um, they, people can yeah, still wish you a happy uh, birthday. Uh, two major important things came into the world in <laughs> 87. <laughs> One, me. Two, this. <laughs> so. I mean, I'm not going to argue. Both very good things. Yeah. And if you have heard us before, we are, or if you haven't as well, we are the hosts of the podcast Bat Minute, where we talk about the uh, Batman movies one minute at a time. So we're we're well versed in this kind of nonsense. Mm, mm. Oh yeah, this is this is like a water off a duck's back at this point now. Like oh yeah, minute by minute, we've we've been there, we've done that a lot. Oh yeah, and this is this is a much shorter movie as well. <laughs> so that kind of yeah, helps. Yeah, that kind of helps yeah. with this. But, uh, yeah, we are talking about Miami Connection. And, uh, I mean, if you've never really seen the movie or it's been a long time since you've seen the movie, I mean, you're, you were strange for listening to us. But I did uh, enjoy the roundup I've got here that the, uh, the Alamo Draft House had on their website. It's just a little synopsis. It says, Motorcycle ninjas tighten their grip on Florida's narcotics trade, viciously annihilating anyone who dares move in on their turf. Multinational martial arts rock band Dragon Sound have had enough and embark on a roundhouse wreck wave of crime crushing justice. When not chasing beach bunnies or performing their hit song against the ninja, Mark, Taekwondo master slash inspirational speaker YK Kim, and the boys are kicking and chopping at the drug world's smelliest underbelly. It'll take every ounce of their blood and courage, but Dragon Sound can't stop until they've completely destroyed the dealers, the drunk bikers, the kill crazy ninjas, the middle-aged thugs, the stupid cocaine, and the entire Miami connection. <laughs> See, I love about that, though, is it really feels like, oh, yeah, this, uh, this crime syndicate of ninjas <laughs> has got the, the city in its grip. And if you watch it, it seems as if no one else in the state of Florida is aware that this is going on at all. <laughs> they don't seem to be having any effect beyond this group of random people massacring each other <laughs> and then yeah. having no effect on the society around them at all. I mean, the only outliers it affects in the entire film seemingly are the band. Mm, mm. And even they're just kind of like, oh, how do we get roped up into this? Like, a lot of the time, it's like, <laughs> we're just a band. We're just trying to exist. Like, how the hell has this happened? Leave them alone. It's just oh, really but... like some random, crazy ninja biker drug dealers <laughs> have <laughs> decided, that bad. Now we're going to make them our 100% priority. Hey, you know, when something gets your attention, when you're me, when you've got ADHD, you know. When something gets your attention, that's it. You hyper focus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then six weeks later, you don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, gonna be hyper focusing on this. Hopefully, six weeks later, we'll still be at it. But like, hey, we didn't mean we did four whole seasons of Batman. It's so. exactly when there's a schedule in place, when you've got to do something, or people will shout at you online. You do it. 
<laughs> uh, but we, yeah, so as you said again there, we uh, talk about the Batman movies, but we decided here to turn our attention to another world we both love, which is so-called bad movies. Mm, mm. But, you know, we've kind of thought, well, what new angle can we bring to this? People talk about bad movies all the time. Um, the Room and things like that. Everyone's done it. So we picked a slightly different one. And also, I think, I mean, speaking for myself, I I genuinely love this movie. Mm, mm. Like, okay, it's technically bad, but how often do you have as much fun with a film as this? There's something, yeah, there's something very, very pure about Miami Connection in that, like, it is, it's one of those ones, like, it, it wasn't, it's not a Sharknado. It's not a we've deliberately made a cheesy movie. It's like, yeah, these, these people, well, particularly this one guy, much <laughs> yeah. like Tommy Wiseau with The Room, mm-hmm. uh, poured his you know heart and soul into making something that he thought was going to be like a masterpiece. And it's, you know, it's like a disaster, basically. Like, it's so, on a base level, it's kind of like, yeah, this is not competently made, <laughs> but it seems that, like, it, he made it with pure intentions. Yeah. Like, one of his things, it wasn't so much like, you know, Tommy Wiseau, was of the mindset of, like, I'm going to make this and become a star. <laughs> yeah. Whereas YK Kim seems to be like, I'm going to make a movie about Taekwondo that has a message about violence in the world. And, like, it's going to help spread peace throughout society. Like, this yeah, all he just, wants to do is spread peace and, and Taekwondo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a even film about, about friendship. Like, it, and it really comes, like, despite all of the bad acting and the, you know, the, weird editing and the sound choices and all the stuff that's like, oh, that's, you know, technically this is a bad movie. It still comes across like, no, this guy genuinely, he believes what he's saying and he meant the best by making this film. Absolutely. And on top of it, it doesn't help that it's, you know, it goes from so, you know, being so bad, it's good. A lot of it too is also just like, it's just, it's so funny that it's like, (laughs) It's you know it's just genuinely good in a lot of ways as well. So yeah, I enjoy watching the soundtrack. It. The soundtrack's like genuinely just like that's a masterpiece. Like that soundtrack, like you oh, it's banger after banger. Yeah, there's not one song on it that's bad. Like even the ambient synth is good <laughs> in this thing. So and that's from a genuine viewpoint. That's not like an ironic nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah, it's yeah. genuinely good. Now, yeah, like Kim, he makes it as you say. He makes it with love, passion, sincerity. Uh, he's putting his all into it. Everyone, everyone is putting their all into it, whether they can do it or not. Yes, they're all yes. trying so hard. Well, that, that's the weird thing. We'll see it as we, you know we go as we go through the movie proper, because we probably should explain that this we're not doing like a minute at the minute. This is just an introductory episode. Yeah, that's a good point. We didn't say that. This is yeah. this is like a minute zero. This is to lay the groundwork. Yeah, and so you know, then next episode we'll begin the the film proper. But it is weird that like. Everyone else seems to be on YK Kim's wavelength in mm-hmm. that they all they also are kind of very – they come across very wholesome and stuff. Like yeah. all his friends in the movie. There's no one there who's – you can't imagine anyone behind the scenes being like, oh my god, this thing sucks. You know, they've been like, what the hell the hell we get into this? Like I think everybody involved was like, oh, this will be good. I think, I think we're going to – I think YK Kim must be that charismatic yep. that he probably convinced them. You know, again, not like The Room where like if you read uh, Greg Sestero's book <laughs> – like they're aware that this. Oh, is a you disaster. can tell in the finished film that Greg knows. Yeah, yeah. And Greg's just like this guy's my buddy. I'm gonna <laughs> stick by him, but I know this is terrible. Like, it's, <laughs> every, I, I genuinely think everyone in this is probably like, no, yeah, this movie's gonna change the world. I think, and I, I, I believe Y.K. Kim's message, mm-hmm. and I think he's actually gonna pull this off and stuff. But yeah, uh, they're all coming to it from that angle. Friends forever. Yeah, there are friends forever. It's loyalty, honesty, you know, yeah. all Although, the important stuff. <laughs> having said all of that stuff, you know, we, we we do love it. We will still poke fun at it. Don't worry. Oh, it, we're, not, we're not just going to be very serious about it. Much, much like, uh, you know, our, as of recording, our last season for, our most recent season for Bat Minute was Batman and Robin, a film which literally has something wrong in every minute of it. <laughs> And this movie is no different. Like it's just, like, we're kind of it is kind of a weird synergy with Batman and Robin in yeah. that they're both like highly acclaimed, so bad they're good films. Also about ninja orphans, which is a, a kind of weird thing. It's like this if this was about like good all point. the Robins living together and they formed a band, I'd be like, oh yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. That you could you could easily remake Miami Connection, call it like Gotham Connection. <laughs> Oh, 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 this has to happen. Oh, my God. I've never considered that. Like, I've always thought, you know, this is this is up there with The Room, Troll 2, Showgirls. But, oh, my God, Batman and Robin. 
yeah, yeah there's a I, I think this is just because it has like a fra- like a, a microcosm of the budget the Batman and Robin did but again I think it's on the same level like Batman and Robin one and beyond like you know the 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 will for it to make money you know was designed to like uh, sell a lot of toys mm. there still is a, a, a wholesomeness to Joel Schumacher and it's like I made a movie to entertain children. And that's all I ever wanted to do. And like, and everybody, oh. you got really vindictive about it. And now, yeah, everyone hates it and stuff. I was entertained as a kid. I know you weren't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the thing from his wholesomeness is like, no, nah, don't, don't ever apologize. Like Joel Schumacher apologized for that movie. Never apologized, Joel. No, you didn't. You didn't owe any sorries to anybody. Okay. But then the same with Miami Connection. It's just like, well, you know, YK Kim. The only person he hurt in making this was himself. Uh, like he, he, we can get into that in a little bit, but like a guy really brought himself to the brink to, to get this thing out into oh, the world and stuff. Oh god, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know the full extent of it until I started uh, like researching for this and watching, you know, YouTube videos and things. I was, oh, oh, we'll get to that. Mm. Uh, I suppose people might be thinking though, why this film? Yeah, you know, they might yeah. know us from our other shows. You've got Batman here. I've got Hedvig. Um, mm. Why this? Now we, we first watched this together. Wasn't it? I think we were drunk at a friend's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe that, believe so. Yeah, so due to that, I kind of only half saw it. <laughs> but but something stuck in my mind, you know. So I, I watched it a second, a, a very serious solo second viewing. And that's when it sank in and connected. I, you know, because I wasn't... When you're at a friend's house, you're kind of talking. You're not really paying attention. Unless it's... I don't know. Some For some reason, the room really did make us all shut up. Yeah. <laughs> but since that moment of the second viewing, I, I watched this like every year. Mm, so mm. that's why for me i will also stress to people too it's currently on youtube the whole film is, oh. just, is just there so if you're like him and han about like, do i want to pay for rental of miami connection currently if you were to just youtube it the thing is there in one chunk uh, so i would advise it's only like what 80 minutes or something like it's yeah, ridiculously yeah. short it's so it it is a painless and very entertaining eighty minutes. So if you're sort of listen to this going, is this the show for me? I don't know much about this film. Watch the movie because you can for free, and it's yeah. uh, it's really like afterwards you will happily buy a, a vinyl of the soundtrack <laughs> and pay for the posters and stuff. I'd recommend you do all of that, all of it. Mm-hmm. Watch it on YouTube, then go buy all of that stuff because you will. I, I know some people listening because they've told me they're going to. Um, are only listening because they know us uh, mm. from our other shows. So they're like, oh, yeah, I'll check it out. I've never seen the movie, though. No. Watch it. I yeah, promise yeah. you. Watch it, watch it, watch it. You will not regret it for one second. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is one that I think it um, it will be weird. Like It would be weird to approach any movie by you know watching it minute at a time. <laughs> I know some people have done that with movies by minute shows where yeah. they're like, oh, you know. And there was a guy who I think – literally listened to all of the godfather minute without having watched any of it oh, and crazy. then only watched the movie after the, the season was done and like that's a weird way to go that i think it miami connection to your kind of, imagination <laughs> i think miami connection needs to be viewed kind of first really. it needs to be like viewed a, by the entire planet yeah yeah <laughs> it really is oh man you know maybe it could have achieved the elimination of violence by now had it actually done that but oh. the mission it's it's <laughs> It um it sets out to do through very mixed messaging, uh, like the the whole idea like oh through you know the, through the elimination of violence only then can we achieve world peace, and it's like you know literally like every every all the heroes in this are just flat out like mass murderers. Yeah, it brings up. Well, I mean, obviously we'll get to that in like eighty odd minutes, but the uh, the way that message comes up seconds after a mass slaughter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess you're like, it's supposed to be like an eye, like a, a, oh, the tragedy of this. Uh, I guess that's what you're going for. But it's also like, you're, the heroes of this, flat out, they don't try to avoid fights. <laughs> they throw themselves into fights and are willing to like, is this escalating to like swords? Okay, I guess we're chopping off heads now. <laughs> like, it's, Oh yeah, limbs come off with abandon at one point. Yeah, yeah. So you're kind of, you're, it's, it's very much one of those ones of like, well, you look at this slightly differently. Maybe YK Kim and his buddies are the bad guys here because they're, oh. they're as violent as the freaking other ninjas. That's how you do a follow-up film. Let's view it from the other perspective. Oh, you got to get the, the Cobra Kai yep. of uh, Miami. Oh, Connection. there you go, a Netflix show. <laughs> <laughs> Miami Kai. <laughs> oh, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. <laughs> uh, but I, I do have some facts about the film now as well mm. that I uh, researched and found quite interesting. 
So uh, Wu Sang Park, who's the co-director and co-writer, mm. he was originally supposed to be doing both of those, but he just basically didn't do half the work. So YK Kim had to. Um, he met Kim on the South Korean talk show. Now, this doesn't translate very well, but it's called Meet at 11 p.m. Mm. Uh, and he was so impressed with Kim that he just immediately was like, we're doing a movie together. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Let's do it. Let's roll. I think his whole thing was he was a martial arts movie director mm. like he's made uh, some of the all classics no doubt uh, he's made <laughs> things such as dreadnought rivals duel of the ultimate weapons great uh, la street fighters uh, and american chinatown which I, I don't know if that's like a kung fu remake of the jack nicholson movie <laughs> but like <laughs> it's exactly it was, jack nicholson's chinatown just with fighting yeah, and Robert Zadar apparently is in that movie. Robert like, Zadar is in half of these kind of films. <laughs> I think that's the thing, but it's like, oh, you made it if you got Robert Zadar. You know you've achieved bad movie pinnacle if you've got Robert <laughs> Zadar in the movie. But I think, yeah, I think it was YK was a, a grandmaster, Kim, as he is commonly referred to, because mm. he is grandmaster of Taekwondo. Uh, every time I seen it, too, I was just like, it would have been great in Thor Ragnarok had the character of Grandmaster that <gasps> Jeff Goldblum plays. they Because they really build up his introduction, too, where they're like, you are about to meet the Grandmaster. And I'm like, I was happy enough to see Goldblum when he showed up in that movie. <laughs> but the YK Kim was playing that part, too. But like, my, I think my, my eyeballs would have just burst out of my skull. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that would have been perfection. Then You've ruined it now. I didn't think anybody could ruin Jeff Goldblum. But you know, <laughs> you've done it. I mean, you know, I know YK, unfortunately... Uh, is not acting uh, since 1987, but get him, him and Goldblum in a movie together, oh. or that the world according to Jeff Goldblum, get him down to Florida to meet the guy. Oh, to, to talk about no, the I need a movie with the two of them. Just basically just rush hour. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I would 100% sign off on that. Why yeah. not? You know, rush hour, good series. Hmm. Eh. Well, the first two. First two. Is there a th- there's a third one, isn't there? I don't remember I think the there is, yeah. yeah. First two, though, really cool. Really good. Mm-hmm. Good concept. But um, the film here opened in eight cinemas in Orlando, uh, mm. which I actually thought was pretty good for, a, you know, like a, a small release. But Kim spent, as you alluded to, millions of his own money producing, promoting, distributing. Because, I mean, I, I don't want to diss Wu Sang Park, but it sounds like he didn't do a lot. Um, yeah. And I know, I know it yeah. sounds it like really Kim could... maybe got suckered in by a scam, but he didn't. He just believed in it. He's like, I've got to help it succeed. I think a lot of it too. It does come across as more his vision, yeah, than anyone else's. And like, you don't. Um, I think it was a Wu Sam Park. He goes by. He went by Richard Park. I think then in America because obviously I guess they were they were doing yeah. an Arnold Strong, Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of scenario <laughs> there. Um, I th- like he uh, died in two thousand and six, oh. and. I think it does kind of come across the vibe. He's like, well, you know how to direct, so you can direct this. And there's more like YK Kim is like, yes, I will make this film and I will bring Taekwondo and mm. peace to the universe through through making this thing. And <laughs> they go, like Park was just kind of like, OK, buddy, like, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll show up and I'll point the camera for you. <laughs> but uh, I think he was <laughs> at the point of reshoots. He had just gone back to Korea and he's like, I ain't coming back for that. Uh, yeah, so he get, completely um, left. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, Grandmaster, and uh, what's the other guy named? Uh, Jack D- Diamond, not Diamond, Diamond, who is yeah. one of the, he's one of the orphans. In, in the, in the, everybody in it is like, oh, that guy is actually, he's also the DP. <laughs> like it's, it's one of those kind of movies. <laughs> hey, multitasking. Him and Grandmaster Kim, apparently then it's like, that guy's gone. We need to do reshoots. I'll read a book on screenwriting. You read a book on film directing, and we'll just do it ourselves, which is... I mean, I guess they did it, so... Yeah. You know, go, good for them. And we're <laughs> but, here talking about it now. So, you know, who's who failed, really? I mean, nowadays, it's just the... Mo- it was just the 1987 equivalent of, like, I watched a YouTube video on how to yeah. direct a movie. And I That's how we started a podcast, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of the time... There's so many directors are probably, like, really acclaimed now. They're just like, I mean, freaking Kevin Smith. I don't know, like, he still technically isn't a good director. But well, yeah. His whole thing was, was like, oh, wing it. And then Andy did. And now he's like a he's a, a media entity onto himself. Mm-hmm. Maybe that'll be us one day. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, the film, as I said, was a bomb. 
and it received such terrible reviews that Kim lost almost every penny he had. He was pretty much bankrupt, mm. which is really upsetting. And it would be years and years before the film even saw the light of day and before yeah. he could come to terms with it on a personal level. When you watch watch him talking about the failure of the movie, he's, he's still kind of heartbroken by it. That seems like it was a very emotional experience for him because he, mm. lit, he, again, poured his entire life and everything he had into making this uh, and at one point I was reading an interview where they were saying like, uh, you know, everybody told me not to do it, mm. but my will is too strong. So oh. I did it anyway. It's like, I kind of like, that's kind of like a humble brag in a weird way of like, you know, you can tell me not to do a thing, but my will is so damn strong. <laughs> like I can't even control it. It'll just do it anyway. I love that. That's so cool. I've got a similar quote from him actually, where he said uh, he, he tried to sell the movie to a hundred studios and distributors. And uh, in his words, every single person said, hey, Kim, this is trash. (laughs) And it says, he says, tears welling at the memory. But I couldn't stop. No way. Mm, It's mm. like, oh, that's quite cute. And his his mother helped push him uh, with this uh, interesting quote. She said, you only live once, not twice. As long as you live, maximize your potential. When you die, your body will be rotten. <laughs> and he, he, he sprung to life, apparently, when bringing this up. And he's like, yes, I am still alive. I can do it. It's like, is his mother also a motivational speaker? Though? <laughs> yeah. Things like maximize your potential. It's like, my, my parents never have said the, to the phrase yeah, maximize your potential. Isn't that literally one of the phrases he uses? I think it is. Maybe, again, maybe that's the house he grew up in. That's why he is a motivational speaker. It's like, oh, my mother only, like, she learned English through, like, random, you know, uh, go-getter quotes and stuff. So. <laughs> oh, he's, he's got a, a few good quotes about it. Because, you know, he put, he blew all the money that he put aside for the entire film in 10 days of shooting. <laughs> it's just like, oh, my God. And he, he recalls that the whole shoot was a nightmare. He said, I was in hell. To make movies, money flies so fast, it requires a lot of work. But I couldn't stop because I told all of my students, I will show you this movie in the theatre. Mm. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. I should also note, too, like, he's a very charismatic guy. Like, I get why people were like, yeah, you can do this. Like, yeah. maybe you know, said there are other people saying, you can't do this and you should stop. But I can understand why other people were like, yeah, I'll sign on for this thing because... Well, was it one of the things that, like, they didn't have permits to shoot anything? No. But because he was, I think he landed in America in 1977 and established the, I think it's literally just called, like, YK Kim's Taekwondo School or something. <laughs> like. Uh, not pushing the boat out with titles there. Very clever. Yeah, he's really, really thought hard. <laughs> but I think he was just so beloved in the neighborhood. The people, like the police and like the, the city council, were like, "Oh no, go do whatever you want." Like, okay, like you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice guy. He's not going to do anything. You want to so. shoot at the school? Yeah, sure. Feel free. Go ahead. I think it was very. You want to use that uh, parking lot to close off that street? Okay, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll help you out. You know. Hey, if YK Kim came up to me and asked for a favor, he's getting it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing too. Like, you watch this movie, like, oh, how comically bad is this thing? But then you see him speaking about it. Within a couple of seconds, you're going to be sucked in yep. and emotional with him because it's like this guy. I don't know. He's he has got something. He's got a very transfixing presence about him. Yeah, and I don't want to be stereotypical because I'm not saying this as an individual. But I think part of the problem, you know, I mean, obviously it wasn't the best made movie, but the problem that he didn't then go on to anything else. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to be partly the accent, right? Yes. yes like, there, I, I am fine with it. But it's even, like, at least Arnold's is comical. Mm. So people people used to like, oh, he sounds funny, which is a terrible thing to say, but people did. But Kim, I don't, I don't recall anyone thinking, oh, he sounds hilarious, you know? Mm. I think it's, yeah, it's very much like, you know, there's, there's several, well, let's say several. Most of the movie is ADR. <laughs> yes. And still, with that, a lot of what YK Kim is saying is difficult to sort of decipher sometimes. Like, he's, his accent is very, very thick. Mm. Uh, and um, when he's the lead of the film, that can be a problem sometimes. Yeah. But, you know, we get past it. Like, well, yeah, we, we do, because just... we're, we're cool. We're not fools. Yeah. I remember there was that time Anthony Hopkins blamed the failure of Hannibal the TV show on Mads Mikkelsen's accent. Oh, yeah. Which I, like... I've always been baffled by. I, when IMDb used to have message boards, um, 
I remember on the Hannibal one, there were quite a few Americans saying, I can't understand him. Mm. And is it just because we're European? Like, I, I never had an issue. Yeah, I think he, he, he does have a... I'm not too sure with Mads if it's the accent or it's the way he speaks, because he speaks in a very low... Quiet uh, and mumbly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got another another quote from Kim uh, where it's saying, you know, as, as for the folks who actually put down cash to see this movie, he says, uh, some asked for money back for that junk movie you showed. I let my students down. It was terrible. It's like, oh, my heart breaks for him. <laughs> oh, That's all he cares to... about. He doesn't care about himself. Mm, mm. I think I get a lot of the students were in the movie. Like a lot of the ninjas are his... Are all his like, and the, the students are very dedicated to him. Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes a little bit too much. <laughs> it's like there's that one documentary, the Vice documentary. And there's mm. that guy called Master Winkle. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is just like, okay, of course he's called Master Winkle. He's <laughs> a brilliant name. <laughs> but he's like all tearing up about like what what learning Taekwondo through YK Kim has done to him. Like, he's like he actually does got like inspired to go and find his father and stuff. But, uh, he's like, oh, I owe everything in my life to YK Kim. Mm-hmm. So I think it's like, yeah, once you get the guy, he's borderline cult leader. Like he's so... If, his, his if people... he was evil, he would have the power to lead a cult. Yeah, yeah. So he, he's got a um, death, deathly dedicated fan base. And so I can understand him not wanting to let them down. Because, like, I guess even in the 80s, they might have been like, I will fall on any sword for you, Grandmaster Kim. Like, <laughs> you know, he, he had people in the palm of his hand. He did, he did, but not enough to see the movie. So sort of disappeared, disappeared, disappeared. Mm. And uh, June 2009, Zach Carlson, a programmer at the Alamo Draft House in uh, Austin, Texas, happened upon a seller on eBay who was selling a 35 millimeter print of, of the film. Mm. Uh, and Carlson had never heard of the movie, obviously, but he bought it for $35. Well, one report says $50. He said $35. In, mm. uh, in I saw a report saying $40. Like, what the oh, hell? there you go. They've gone in the middle. <laughs> Have they gone for like, I don't know, was there shipping involved? Like, what, what is this? Well, that's the thing. Yeah, the fees, you know, that kind of... B- between 35 and $50, which, I mean, for a 35 millimeter print of anything, that's pretty good. I was kind of curious too of like, um, cause he kept saying it was like it was a blind auction. Yeah. So I wasn't too sure. If maybe it was just a random film reel, and they're like, "We got this. It's got something on. We don't know what it is." No, that's it, that's what I think it is. Yeah, it's just like uh, there's something on this. What do you, do you want it? <laughs> yeah. Apparently, too, the original negative was destroyed in Hurricane Charlie. Oh no! I didn't in two thousand and four, so it was really like it was sitting somewhere. Some, I guess, I guess YKKM probably would have had the negative, but. Yeah, even then to be like, you know, what would that be? 2004 would have been like 17 years later. And then to be like, yeah, I still got, I still got it in the basement. And for like, no, that film is totally gone now. It's <laughs> definitely never coming back because a hurricane, came, the, the hand of God came down and destroyed the thing as well. Oh, everything so was, was trying to stop this come. masterpiece. Yeah, never any, any ever any chance of a uh, of some kind of comeback. It would seem to, you know. Never, well, never. It's gone now for all time. Well, Kim and Carlson released it to spite God. <laughs> clearly, clearly that's what it is. It's an affront to the Lord. <laughs> um, well, they, uh, Carlson did screen it at the Draft House, and it it became like wildly popular with cult film fans, mm. which I I didn't know about that aspect of it. I, I thought it just kind of it became a big deal when they just released a random Blu-ray of it. I'd never heard of the cult film screenings in the Draft House, I'll be yeah. honest. I, that's I probably how a lot of Americans come to know of it, but not not me. I think, and I can 100% understand that too, because <laughs> it's like, you imagine if you went to like the Alamo Draft House and they're like, we, we found this film, come and check it out. And they're just like, we randomly chanced upon this. <laughs> like as soon as the first song by Dragon Sound starts. Yeah. And you would just randomly bought this off eBay. You'd be like, "What? How? How has this happened? <laughs> this is literally like the greatest thing ever." <laughs> it's, 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 it's it really is. When you listen to these songs, your fist pumping, and you're like, Ray! <laughs> "Yeah!" And you're just like, and every you start noticing all the random weird crap that's going on. In it you're like, "Oh, there's this. This thing is just such a. It's literally like I bought a box on eBay." And it happened to have like a you know the world's largest diamond in it. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. just, Pretty much. And uh, one of my favorite stories about the Draft House is the way they, 
you know, they they got hold of it and they were showing it and stuff. And uh, they phoned Kim. You probably saw this on the on the documentary. Mm-hmm. There. They phoned. Kim. I think this is, of, of all the story of Miami connection, this is the the, the one bit I remember the most <laughs> is the them trying to contact him. Yeah, they're trying to get hold of him to like you know talk about the distribution of the movie. Uh, but the film's failure was, you know, still really painful for him after all these years. Uh, so he thought people were recalling him as a prank. Mm. Uh, and they kept calling him, kept calling him, kept, and he just kept hanging up on them. Yeah, they would just announce what they intended, and he would just hang up the phone without saying anything. And he just had to keep coming back and trying again and again to get in touch with him. It eventually worked, though. He relented. He took the call. Yeah, I mean, it was just so weird, though, because I think he, he's released a book called Winning is a Choice. <laughs> yeah. And yet he was so resigned to the failure of this film. The movie was that much of a bomb. He's like, winning is a choice, but that movie is a, is 100% <laughs> dead. Maybe this is the thing that taught him that lesson, though. Like, mm. if only I'd done... If only I tried harder. I didn't try hard enough with the movie. I, mean, I think he tried as hard as anyone could possibly Yeah, try. but he's the kind of person who probably thinks he didn't. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, um, you know, he, he goes to screenings and stuff now, still. Which I find amazing. Uh, you know, he, he goes all the time because he, he seems like someone who might kind of um, be upset that people find it funny. Yeah. But but he no, he embraces it. He's like, yeah, cool. Like, you're enjoying it. You're having fun. That's all that matters. And mm. my message is getting out there. Yeah. I, th- I don't think he is doing the Tommy Wiseau thing of like, no, it was always a comedy. No, that's no. The, that's why, no, no. It, it, uh, Tommy, no one's buying that, man. Yeah, it was like no, Tommy. Like we 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 heard the story. We read we read the book. We saw the we saw the the friggin' Franco movie. Like we know what what the deal is. Yeah. Um, whereas YK Kim, I genuinely think he's probably like no, people are enjoying this thing. If it's bring, I think he only ever wanted to bring joy. It's like if people yeah. are finding joy in this thing, and they're going and they're dressing up in the friggin' the fingerless gloves and the sleeveless <laughs> tank tops and the the leather waistcoats. And they're doing the kick in the air and pumping their fists to the song. That why yeah, it's like yeah, people genuinely love it. So they do, and, and Kim loves that about it. Like uh, he says here at the 2012 summer premieres or premieres if you're American in New yep. York and L.A. I was astonished when I saw the audience going crazy with a never-ending torrent of cheers, applause, laughter, and screams like a riot throughout the entire movie. Many viewers even cried during a tragic moment in the film. I like that. Not spoiling it for people. Uh, (laughs) After the movie was finished and the lights came on, nobody wanted to leave. They seemed to want to make the good feeling last. I have never seen a movie audience react like this in my life. I thought I was dreaming, so I pinched my arm. But it was not a dream. It was real. I feel Mm. like I am watching a dead body walking. It is a miracle. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet again. I mean, even through that, it's like, I kind of want to see it with a crowd. Like, we, the, the rooms come here several times. Mm-hmm. Like, friggin' Tommy was so and Greg came here. We were on stage with them and stuff. But, like, yeah, may, maybe we have to be the change in the world we want to see, John. Maybe we should be hosting friggin' Dragon Sound parties oh. <laughs> and Miami Connection. Maybe that should be the season finale. We'll be, like, live from Liverpool. We're, in we're fact- hosting the movie. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe we get the Grandmaster Kim himself. Although maybe we'll probably have to fly him in when I don't have that kind of money. Uh, well, <laughs> if you want to help us fly Grandmaster Kim, uh, go and give to Sleepy Charlie Media, our network's Patreon. Yes, yes, yeah. It was, uh, it was originally going, all the money was going to go to a, a cameo from Coolio. <laughs> uh, but uh, tragically, that was not to be. But now well, we can just actually fly in a real life in person cameo from YK Kim. Um, or anybody who worked in this movie. Like everyone in it is a gem. There's it's, it's another yeah. one of those things, too. Like, there's not a character in this who I don't love. Exactly. Because everybody is ridiculous. <laughs> For a completely different reason. Every one of them is so... 100% ridiculous. Yeah. But for completely different reasons. Like all like, of the like, band. Each one of them is a unique individual uh, and yeah. fascinating. And I want a whole movie about each one of them. Yeah, it's just, even like the random side characters, like the bad guy, some of the henchmen. <laughs> yeah. are like there's a guy's like there's a random guy who's Oh, it's a, I don't know what point we'll get into the minutes with like some of the henchmen, but like there's a guy in it who like you can tell he's improvising everything. Yeah. yeah. And he really wants to stick out in the movie. I was like, I love this guy he's so much. Trying because so hard. 
I kind of uh, so he's the guy I think I would be if I was in Miami Connection. I'd be like, I'll be this this tryhard extra, and like I'll say a couple of lines. This is really funny. This is bound to get in, making <laughs> terrible jokes. <laughs> but like, no, no, I said it on camera. They gotta keep it. They can't afford to buy a new film. So like, that's definitely gonna be in the movie now. Yeah, one take for everything. Like, that's I'm making that up. That's not actually uh, true. I it could would, be true. I would be willing to bet every <laughs> single take in this movie as a first day. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't got time. We've got money. Go, go, go. They probably were like, we'll just ADR everything. Well, they, I mean, actually, probably at the time, they didn't know what ADR was. <laughs> no. the, it's like, oh, no, the what, sound's trash. What are we going to do? Uh, I read about a thing called ADR. It probably was a day of YK Kim, like reading that book and then coming to the chapter on like sound and been like, whoa, <laughs> wait, I could just add a new sound later? That's much better. You can't hear a goddamn thing in this footage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, because, too, you know a lot of it probably was, like, there's a lot of open-air stuff, and it probably was just boom mics hanging with his, like... Well, if they even had a boom mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, oh it's like, now now I'm getting to the point, though, I'm salivating to talk about the actual film, <laughs> but I'll be all for the... That's, that's what the show is going to be, so... Yeah, and that'll be coming soon, people. And You know, you seemed excited for Henchmen. Spoiler alert, the first few episodes are all about Henchmen. Yeah. It's just yeah. Henchmen for, like, five minutes. <laughs> it's the only minutes in Miami as well. As <laughs> what? How dare you say that? Are you suggesting that the name of this movie is a lie? I think I was one well, because I was thinking of if people aren't aware, one of the catchphrases we've uh, sort of come upon in that minute is uh, everything's connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did write down everything's connected brackets except Miami. <laughs> uh. <laughs> because. And then I was like, could that be a t-shirt? Can we make that into a t-shirt? Hey, <laughs> listeners, if you want that on a shirt, we'll we'll get it for you. Yeah. I mean, currently yeah. there are a couple. You've got the logo you can purchase. If you go to the Sleepy Charlie Media Tee Public, you know, there's the logo. Um, and there is also one of the names of the characters and the actors. Hmm? And there is also one that says, only through the elimination of violence can we achieve world peace. Yeah. yeah. In as close a replica to the font as I could get. It's not exact, because that font hmm. seems lost to time. <laughs> but it's a very close font. <laughs> that that font was considered trash. So now the original data file of it is sitting in someone's garage. <laughs> the data file was burned. The hard drive it was on was set on fire. Get rid of this thing. Uh, but oh, there's so much to talk about in this thing. Oh, it's there just, is. It's, again, every minute has got something. Like it's, <laughs> There's not a moment that goes by where it's like not something weird or funny or heartwarming or hilarious is occurring in <laughs> Miami Connection. So. so I've only got a couple of uh, other things here, um, as, as you know, Niall, but the listeners might not. Kim, he continues his martial arts school and magazine uh, called Martial Arts World, which is not a particularly mm. original name either. He's not the best <laughs> at snappy names, is he, Kim? You know, we love you, but... Mm. I did notice too. Someone said, I think it was the Orlando Weekly said of um, his martial arts school. Oh, yeah. They called it the McDonald's of martial arts schools. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't too sure if that was a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's both. <laughs> I think it's like, well, there's, you know, he just churned them out. There's millions of them. Mm. Uh, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. I suppose it depends on who's staffing them because obviously Kim's not running them all directly. Yeah, yeah. He's doing uh he is doing the co- the Cobra Kai thing and the, the latest season yeah. come here Cobra Kai That's uh, everywhere in the valley. <laughs> Those hacks over at Netflix stealing things from Grandmaster Kim. Oh man. I would uh, love of one of the seasons of Cobra Kai is Terry Silver or John Kreese making a movie. <laughs> <gasps> or Daniel. Oh, if they just did the, that would be the hero's thing of like Daniel's gonna make he Oh, there we go. Yeah, because one of the seasons he said, oh, "Okay, I'm going to give up karate, and I'll never, you know, I vowed that if we lost the tournament, I'd give up karate." He should make a movie <laughs> to spread his message, and it's called like Valley Connection or something, and it's blatantly just he's made Miami. Connection. Oh my god, yeah, and and uh, Cobra Kai try and thwart him, mm. and when he's down and out and he's lost all his money, he's bankrupt from making the movie. Who walks up to him from out of the shadows? YK Kim. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> now just, we should genuinely be writing the Netflix like, okay, guys, I know you probably got like the next three seasons lined up or whatever, <laughs> but it's not too I know you got that September release date, but it's not too, too late to yank the, the, those off the server. <laughs> Start over. Just completely retool. This is what the next season is going to be. Oh, you know what? I trust Netflix, but I, I trust me and you even more. 
I don't trust Netflix. To I'm waiting for them to cancel the show any second. <laughs> oh God! If that if that ever happens, Netflix. Uh, well, not ever. I mean, if that happens within the next few years, I'm dropping you like a hot potato. No. Yeah. No. You're the, the thing, only uh, thing that I'm. I'm sticking around to watch Squid Game because I'm late to the party, and I'm sticking around for more Cobra Kai. That's it. Yeah. That the Sandman TV show coming eventually, which they'll cancel the after now. one season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I think it's massively expensive. Yeah. So imagine if it doesn't. If, if, if not everyone in the universe is watching it. They're like, well, this doesn't make anything for us. Mm-hmm. So they're already. That the like Netflix is currently in crisis because they reached the the roof on subscribers. Yeah, they deserve. Because everyone it. who wants, yeah, everyone who wants Netflix has already got it, and they're that's why they're having to crack down on the passcode. Well, this uh, is why shows. capitalism. Uh, I won't go too into this, but you know, you can't maintain eternal growth. Mm. Well, does it make sense? You're not going to keep growing. Oh, that's, that, that love has never made any sense to me. Where they're like, we're you know HBO Max, a service that's not available over here. Even though I would happily pay to uh, get HBO Max. I'd sign up right now. Yeah, and, and the things I, I would happily go Netflix, you're out. Yep. <laughs> HBO Max is that's getting your money now. You know, with the first given opportunity to drop Netflix, I will be doing that. Yeah, exactly. Unless they accept our new proposal. <laughs> For season five of Cobra Kai mm-hmm. to be all about Dan LaRusso and Chosen, uh, oh. making the, the, the All Valley connection. <laughs> oh, that's a good name as well. Yes. There's a whole scene of them like auditioning people to be Crease and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and can we have a cameo in that scene? Oh, you get in, you get in like Arnie, you can get in all the big hitters to be like, oh yeah, the, the Russo, he's got a bit of money about him. Maybe he can pay for a big celebrity to star in it. Oh yeah, yeah, like obviously not like a not like a Tom Cruise, but you know, a pretty well known name would make sense for that character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just you imagine the the because the, then Johnny would want to star in it, <laughs> and then just his ego going up again. Oh, it'd be gold! Come on. If this writes itself. Netflix, call us or tweet us at least. Tweet us. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I was thinking, does Kim still, uh, think that this movie is trash? And he's got a great quote on that as well. He says, anybody who is looking for drama, romance, I don't think they should watch this movie. However, anyone who loves music and exciting action and the true meaning of friendship, they're not just going to love. They will be crazy about Miami Connection. Hmm? And, And we are. And you should be. Yeah, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's not. I would, the only thing he was saying that I would say is wrong, if you don't watch it, if you're looking for drama and romance, I mean, there is drama and romance. In this <laughs> it, as well, kind you know? of romance-ish, I guess. A lot of um, homoerotic, <laughs> but you can think of homoerotic love or brotherly love. It's a lot of... You could read it either way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some scenes are definitely leaning one way more than the other. <laughs> and stuff, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, like, everything is. Like, uh, the thing is, I imagine oh, the only bad reviews of Miami Connection I have seen are from those original ones in the eighties. Same. When I get, maybe at the time it was just the world wasn't ready for it, <laughs> and they, you would be like, but your what kids are gonna that? love it. Exactly. It is literally that. Like, <laughs> so I mean, there you go. There's a meme for the page right there. Yeah. But um, uh, the thing now, everyone who encounters it seems to love it. So it's one of those things of like, yeah, it's it's a bad movie. But it's not <laughs> at all either. It's 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 fantastic. It's so. bad, but it's great. Yeah. But yes, do join us on this epic journey of craziness, of action, of, of ninjas, of cocaine. Not not us. Yeah. We're not taking cocaine. I might be having <laughs> the odd drink, but that's about it. That's about it. I was thinking like, what's the what's a good Florida drink? Like mojito? Oh, that, no, that's, that's exciting, a... right? Because I'm planning to have Korean drinks, so you can oh. have Florida drinks. Oh, yeah, meet in the middle. That's yeah. it. That, that's where we're making the Miami drink connection. Oh, right the Miami drink connection. Yeah, and then we can swap. Yeah, Then I'll give you, you my Korean drink, you give me your Miami drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, I think, for my purposes, I think it's going to be way easier to find, like, Florida drinks hey, than it would be Korean. I've already, I've already sourced them. <laughs> It was like a different one for each minute, so like, I got like eighty drinks coming. I was I was planning that, and then it suddenly became a bit difficult. So yeah, uh, I can imagine you know. so. You know, get some Korean beers, get some Korean uh, like spirits. I've sourced them. Mm. I'm good to mm. go, and I hope you're all good to go, listeners. Join us 
soon. I'm not going to tell you when because, you know, we need to figure that out. But soon <laughs> for minute one of Miami Minutes. Do join us on Facebook at the Miami Minutes Taekwondo Orphanage, on Twitter at Miami Minutes, Instagram, you guessed it, Miami Minutes, our website, miamiminutes.kim. Believe it or not, that is a real address. <laughs> you can email us on Miami Minutes Podcast at gmail.com. And as we've alluded to, you know, look up our network, Sleepy Charlie Media, on both Patreon and TeePublic. You get extra bonus episodes, mostly Batman, because uh, of our other show. But you get other stuff on there as well on Patreon. And then TeePublic, you know, all, all the merchandise. And hopefully fans of the movie enjoy this podcast. Mm. And, you know, also to newcomers. <sighs> Let's rock. Listen to me. Five, four, four.